Hi everyone, welcome back. Welcome to Java Express Academy. So we are going to start microservices interview questions as well. So one of the important interview question, okay, uh, every uh, whoever giving an interview, uh, you may face this kind of question, guys. Okay, so we'll start in detail discussion so that on top of that, you can give a proper answer, whatever you like here. Okay, I will give number of points for this question. See here, what are the some common challenges faced when migrating from monolithic application to microservices architecture using the Spring Boot application? Common interview question, guys. Simply they can ask what kind of challenges you faced. You know, need to explain all the challenges here. Whatever you face, you can give a proper answer to in interview room here. Okay. Now have a look till watch till end of the video. You will get all the points here, guys. Okay. So Whenever we are migrating from monolithic to microservice architecture, we have several challenges we have. Few challenges I highlighted here. The first challenge is service decomposition. Okay, what does it mean? If whenever you are migrating from monolithic to microservice to perform service decomposition, first you should aware DDD domain driven knowledge domain driven knowledge basically you should have a complete domain knowledge domain driven design we used to call domain knowledge you should be aware if i say e-commerce application what kind of functionalities search functionality cart functionality or uh, payment functionality different kind of functionalities you are aware okay if i take example of uber cab booking a uh, you want to book a cab okay how you can do service decomposition means you should have a knowledge okay driver is involved google maps are involved so live tracking is in so you should have some kind of a domain knowledge then only we can able to do service decomposition means dividing your application into multiple modules multiple services here now, identifying the right boundaries for microservices here. When you have a functionality, each functionality has one service, one microservice here. And avoid too many small services. That means if you have an e-commerce application, you divided this monolithic e-commerce to microservices into 20 microservices based on the functionality. You mean think a couple of people may do division of 30 to 40 microservices, few people 50 microservices. It's not like that. Too many small services also a problem here. Each requirement one functionality single responsibility principle we should follow when you are dividing your requirement into a microservice here that is about the second point handling data consistency across the service once you start dividing to monolithic to microservice we should be very careful about the data data consistency should be there across all the services here that is the first point service decomposition here second point database management here see here in companies uh, it's depend on our requirement if you feel uh, three microservices required one database another microservice may require another database here here, when you are going for monolithic, we have a single database. When you are dividing into multiple services, we need to move shared database to independent database per microservice here. It's completely up to our requirement how many databases you need. You may use a Mongo. You may use MySQL, you may use Postgres. It doesn't mean if you are dividing 20 microservice, 20 databases means not required at all. It's based on the functionality. If you take search microservice in e-commerce, search functionality communicating with MySQL is very uh, huge. It will take a lot of time. 
compared to Mongo. So in those use cases, we can divide as well. Ensuring data consistency, when you follow database design patterns, we have a saga and event sourcing patterns also we have. When you have this kind of data consistency should follow. See Saga for CQRS and Saga design patterns, we can do that activity as well. When Saga and uh, CQRS will come means to manage the transactions here. Distributed transactions, we can manage as well also here. Okay. So, so even if you want to uh, learn these kind of topics now, if anyone want to enroll, we have in our portal, uh, in our portal, all those topics we already explained here as well. If you see courses who are looking recorded, see Spring Boot and microservices, if you visit here, if you see bottom down, there is some design patterns, or see microservice design patterns, CQRS and Saga rate limiter okay a lot of design patterns we are adding as well who are interested just you can go ahead with in detail if you want okay that is about the second point here data based management second inter service communication when you have multiple microservices okay if you want to communicate between two like whenever you are making an order that order is specific to a product Product is a different microservice. Order is a different microservice. Now, when you are making an order, you should verify the product is valid or not. You need to communicate another microservice. How I can do that? That is, you need to choose between two types of calls. Synchronous communication, asynchronous communication. Synchronous means REST template and Fiend client and web client also. Asynchronous means Kafka or RabbitMQ is the communication between the uh, two microservices here. And we need to handle network latency and failures as well. When you are making a API, it should be fraction of milliseconds. It's not like if you made a request after one minute, if you get a response, that is not the right way to do. We should be taken care latency and failures as well. Whenever, when you are making communicate with another service, if any service is down, how to handle? That is called implementing circuit breakers, resiliency 4J and Hitrix. Hitrix is now deprecated. Resiliency 4J we can use to implement fault tolerance between the microservices here. Okay. Next, security constraints. Constraints means when you have number of services, it's not possible to implement security each and every microservice. To handle, we can implement this security at the gateway layer, either JWT or OAuth2. Maximum for our REST API development or any distributed applications, mostly JWT token. OAuth is specifically SS for purpose. Uh, login with Google, login with Facebook, login with Twitter. For that kind of purpose, we can implement OAuth to, okay? Even while communicating service to service, we can use also, or it's up to our requirement how to happen security as well. Next, distributed logging and monitoring here. When if you have a single application, all logs are captured in single place. It is easy to display the logs and visualize. But when you are dividing into number of services, each microservice own logs, how you can combine and how you can monitor that we need to implement centralized logging using Elasticsearch, Kibana, Visualize, ELK stack and monitoring whether the service is running or not, how you will know? By using Pramodius and Grafana, using these tools, we can perform. To track the request, we have called multiple services, Spring, Cloud, Sleuth, and Jipkin to latency problems as well. How much time, troubleshooting problems and everything. To monitor, to work this Pramodius and Grafana, we need activator as well using this we can implement the logging and monitoring as well. Next, de de deployment and DevOps. When you have monolithic single CI CD, single pipeline, 
but when microservices multiple ci cd pipelines for multiple services and we need to handle containerized services with the docker and kubernetes here we need to handle configuration management using spring cloud config here by following all the things we will be taken care couple of things inter service communication service decomposition our e-commerce platform as well not everything couple of things we are taking care this completely devops part right this is one service discovery and load balancing when you have my number of services uh, to make a rest api call it may take a lot of time if any ip address is changed any port is changed all clients will be affected we need to manage the load balancing automatically. We need to register services dynamically using Eureka and console and load balancing taken care by Spring Cloud load balancer at the API gateway layer also. We need to manage fault tolerance as well. When service is down, it should be taken care, right? That activity. Performance optimization. We should avoid more API calls try to solve individual if something required if right urgent i mean to say complicated requirement if you want to make an api call then we should do we uh, it doesn't mean you should make an api call every time okay to instead of making an api call every time by implementing catchy in our service by using redis or eh catchy we can use and implement the catching we can handle the scalability efficiently here we can increase or decrease our instances and everything here. These are the eight points where you can able to do uh, challenges from monolithic to microservice architecture. Try to watch the video, full length video. You will get complete picture here. I will come up with more scenario based interview questions as well in the next lectures, guys. If you found this video is helpful to you, one like and one comment from each one of you guys. That is the help required from your end so that I can do more and more videos as well. Okay. Thank you guys. And we'll catch up in the next session.